Article 47, please note that the stress of the new Pittsburgh formula concrete is checked by determining the value of FC over BT times KD over 2 times JD, comma, 178,886 times 0.351. No, George. That's 0.315. Thanks. Make that uh, 0.315 times 11 minus... One point, one point, twenty-five times, zero point eight eighty-three times eleven. Maximum shear, large B, equals six seven seven six divided by two. Put them down anywhere, Martin, and run along home. We won't be needing you tonight. We're having guests. Thank you. My hat, my hat, Joseph. Oh, wait a minute, Martin. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Joseph, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Square wrench. This stress is permissible with anchored reinforcements. Anchored reinforcements, my foot, gentlemen. This is Christmas Eve. Oh, oh, oh. Fine thing. Come home full of Christmas spirit and find you two grubbing over a lot of blueprints. Why don't you live at the office and be done with it? These specifications have to be finished. Me gel inform. Let him out. You girls run along home. Here, Susie. Merry Christmas. The same to you. Merry Christmas, Susie. Merry Christmas, Mr. Chadwick. Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas, John. Here. And this is for you, you slave driver. Here you are, Major. Oh, thank you, Michael. Christmas. Nothing but a merchant's holiday. Oh, what the dickens is this? Look at it. Here. Every time I take a cigarette, it plays me a tune. <laughs> Wild Irishman. <laughs> oh, I say. Michael, does this mean my pipe's getting too strong, eh? Well, it's no violet. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Well, I suppose this means I'm getting decrepit. No, I tried to find a black snake whip for you, but I had to take that instead. When you're not shaking that over our heads to make us work, you can hobble around on it and enjoy your sciatica. Now, come on, boys. Do me a favor and clear up this mess. I'd hate the Land Rifers to know that I lived with a couple of heathens who worked on Christmas Eve. That's right, by Jove. I forgot they were coming. Are Van Rypers coming here? Yes, and I was lucky to get them, too. They're fascinating people. They're world traveled. They'll give you all the latest news about India, Chad. So come on. We'd better be getting dressed. Joseph, see that the living room gets cleared up and mix the Tom and Jerry's. Yes, Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> it's a lot of childish nonsense. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and liqueurs? A short dress and creme de mount. Don't forget brandy for Major Chadwick. <laughs> yes, Excellency. Joseph, remember the last Christmas in St. Petersburg, just before the war? Yes, Excellency. Here, Joseph. С Рождеством Христом. Спасибо, Excellency. The Order of Stanislav. For me? You were a great friend to follow me to America, Joseph. It was no longer my Russia without you there. Excellency. Joseph, when I had jewels and lands and palaces, I was often weary and discontent when everything was taken away except my life, I learned that the way to be really happy is to serve others, to be needed. So don't be sorry for me or for what was lost. Come, the guests will be here. Yes, and sir. nothing will be ready. Madam Tanya! Here, Mr. O'Brien. Will you please fix my tie? You know, I'm all thumbs when it comes to tying a proper bow. And the table, oh, it's magnificent. Thank you. Sure, it is magic how you do it. Yes, it really 
really seemed like Christmas in those days. What we should have, George, is a troop of grandchildren. Yeah, blowing horns and beating drums all over the place, not for me. Oh, well, here's a Merry Christmas to you, anyhow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good evening, gentlemen. Christos Voskrese. That's for Easter. Oh, Christmas, oh, so it is. Well, a Merry Christmas to you, then. You're looking very festive, Madame Danya. Thank you, Major Chadwick. And here is your present. Such a big present. Whatever can it be? Well, we thought it would surprise you, but we didn't think it would knock you down. No, 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 George. Get a Tom and Jerry for the Countess. Come now, you must try it on and see how it looks. Ah. It's beautiful. But it will keep me no warmer than your kindness has all these years. Zdarovia. <laughs> And don't tell me that doesn't mean your health. It does. Vasha Zdarovia and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Many oh. of them. And don't you try to duck out and have a tray in your room. You're sitting at the table. I'll be there. And now I must be looking after things. The guests are very distinguished. And as the hostess, I must see that everything is perfect. <laughs> Telegram, sir. Oh, what's wrong now? The Van Rypers, they can't come. Oh? Hmm? Well, that's odd at the last moment. Can't be helped. Illness in the family. Illness in the family. You shouldn't have let them know I'd be here. Don't be ridiculous, George. You had nothing to do with it. Didn't I? Oh, I can hear them. George Vale Melton. Isn't he the fellow who's mixed up in the Shreve case? Acquitted? Lack of evidence? Oh, for pity's sake, George, don't be so sensitive. That's all past and forgotten. Sure it is, and don't flatter yourself that anybody remembers. To tell you the truth, I'm relieved that the Van Rypers are not coming. He's telling the same jokes he told 20 years ago, and she dyes her hair. I think it's a shrimp pink now. I don't know why I asked them to come at all, at all. The trouble with us is we're in a rut. Too much work and no play. We don't take time to see our old friends. Yes, not so many of our old friends left, Michael. Well, then we ought to make new ones. What we ought to do is... What we ought to do is... Oh, come on, have a drink. Confusion to our critics and to us, a Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Must be some lonely souls out in that crowd. You're a sentimentalist. Ha! I have an idea, Chad. Get out your cards, gentlemen. What are you up to now? These are some of the gift wallets that were left over with ten dollars in each of them. Put your cards in them, gentlemen. We'll throw them out of the window and maybe they'll bring back somebody to have dinner with us. What, strangers out of the street? Oh, there are no strangers on Christmas Eve. Besides, it's better than sitting around and hooting at each other like three old owls in a barn. <laughs> but not a one of them comes back. I'll take you up on that. Dinner at Pierre's for all of us, and the loser pays. You heard, Chad. It's a bet. That's all right. I can't lose. How long do we wait? Win or lose, we dine at seven. Say, 
St. Anthony, send us back an honest soul with an appetite. Mine goes first. It's gone. Your turn, Chad. Uh, I can't see without my glasses. All right, you're next, George. Come on, come on. Let it go. Well, I doubt if you'll find anybody worth feeding. But if it gets unbearable, George and I can pop round to the club for a rub of bridge. Don't worry, nobody will come back with them. You're a man of very little faith, George. Come away from the window before you break the charm. Well, finders keepers. <laughs> Any money in it? Ten dollar bill. George Vale Melton. Engraved by uh, Tiffany. <laughs> He'll never miss the money. Here you are, Robin. Merry Christmas. Thank you, madam. You have a heart of gold with other people's <laughs> money. <laughs> I tell you, England's territorial expansion has quite a different significance. No matter how thin you slice it, a grab is a grab. Grab? Oh, that's a specious term. England carried civilization into the wilderness. What was Australia before she redeemed it from the Aborigines? She made it a thriving territory, a ranking continent. For her own special benefit, of course. For the benefit of the whole world. For the benefit of Australia itself. The proof is there isn't an acre of the empire that isn't proud to fly the British flag. And furthermore, let me tell... Oh, will you stop that noise? Noise, is it? What do you two think you're making? The next thing you'll be digging trenches in the run. Yes, but I'm bound to refute his unenlightened bias. Bias my foot. He always takes the other side of the argument to get your goat. Goat? Well, it looks like you pay for the dinner, O'Brien. Maybe I do. And then again, maybe I don't. Good evening to you. Good evening, sir. Somebody here lose a wallet? Yes, yes, come in, come in. Which one did you... I mean, uh, my name is O'Brien. That's the name, all right. There's ten dollars in it. Ten dollars it is, yes. Here you are, sir. Well, Merry Christmas. Wait, wait. You want to stay and have a bit of cheer with us. Well, I... Oh, come along, come along. Uh, what is your name, lad? Uh, James Houston, sir. Houston? This is mighty nice of you. Well, it's nice of you. Sir. I mean to, to bring back my wallet. Come along, come along. Mr. Melton, Mr. Chadwick, this is Mr. Houston. Good evening. Proud to know you, sir. Mr. Houston brought back my wallet. And now he's going to have a drink with us. What do you have, lad? Oh, uh, whatever you're having, sir. I'm having Tom and Jerry myself. How about you, Chad? Oh, well, just a spot. And you, George? No, thanks. I've got to watch out from my back. <laughs> it really feels like Christmas Eve in here. A mighty nice spot. Oh, we want another log. Oh, let me do that, sir. Nothing like an open fire. We always have them down home. Uh, uh, you're from the West. Texas, sir. I'm from Oklahoma myself. Oklahoma? Well, I declare. Howdy, neighbor. It's a small world, isn't it? Here. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Chad? And you might go. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Been up here long? It was since September. I came up with a rodeo to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Thought I'd stay around and look the town over. Stayed a little too long, I guess. Now I'm working for a stake to get back to Texas. Oh, were you going someplace? Dinner, perhaps? No. No, sir, no place in particular. Just walking around. I've never been away from home on Christmas before. Well, so long as you're not going anywhere, why not have dinner with us? Well, now, that's right kind of you, sir, but I don't... Well, after all, Michael, it's no inducement for a young fellow to dine with three old fogies like us, you know. Well, now, if, if you put it that way, I... I can't very well refuse. 
Major Chadwick, this young lady says she found your wallet. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Of course. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Are you Mr. Chadwick? Oh, yes. Oh. I believe it's customary to describe lost articles. Oh, yes, that's right, of course. Of course. Uh, well, it was a sort of a wallet. A square wallet. With my card inside. Any money? Of course. Uh... Oh, yes, ten dollars. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't go. Come over to the fire. It's cold outside. Get a Tom and Jerry for the young lady, George. It'll warm you up. Oh, you did. What's your name? Jean Lawrence. My name's James Houston, ma'am. How do you do, Mr. Houston? Yes, yes, Mr. Houston. Miss Lawrence. Put those two places back. I believe Mr. O'Brien will have guests for dinner after all. Yes, Excellency. The last time I had a Tom and Jerry was back home in New Hampshire. New Hampshire? Then you're not spending Christmas Eve with your family. No, I was just going out to the movies. Why don't you stay and have dinner with us? Oh, well, thank you very much, but I couldn't. Why not? Have you had dinner? No, but I had a late lunch and... I dinner is got... served. That settles it. Come along. Oh, we'll not take no oh, for an answer. Come along. Now, it's all planned. It's a little game we're playing. I'll tell you all about it. You see, there were three of us here, and we made a bet. And uh, one of us lost. sing a bit down on the range. Come on, let's all sing. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Uh, Joseph, Alfonso and Catherine, come here. We're all going to sing. Sure, come on. Uh, how about Jingle Bells? Jingle Bells. Oh, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle Bells, 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 Jingle Бубенчики, бубенчики, бубенчики звенят. Как радостно, как весело нам чата на станях. Пинг-пинг, 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 
sure you make me wish I was 22 again. <laughs> I like you the way you are. Good night. Good night, young lady. Don't forget we have a date tomorrow. Three o'clock at the clinic. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night Madam Tanya. I had a lovely time. Bless you, Chad. We all did. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Jimmy. But wait. You are forgetting your overcoat. Oh, I didn't have an overcoat. But that's not my overcoat. Your overcoat. have a good tailor. Uh. Good night, ma'am. Youngsters. That boy reminds me of David. Oh, oh. I thought you two were going out to the club to play bridge. Now, oh, Michael, <laughs> don't gloat. <laughs> Look at the Irish. Oh. I'm turning in. Good night. Good night, John. Good night. Tough guy. Gave the lad his pet overcoat. It's all been real. Neither can I. Maybe we're dreaming. You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Santa Claus, reindeers and all, sliding right down the sky any minute. Would you? Hello, <laughs> His name's Gallagher. He's Officer Johnson's force. He loves sugar. I declare that's really something. I never expected to find a girl in New York carrying sugar around for a horse. Oh, good evening, Miss Lawrence. Oh, good evening, Officer Johnson. This is Mr. Houston. Oh, so I am. He's just admiring your horse. Yeah, I, I raise him myself down in Texas. Oh, you do, huh? Sure is a pretty coat. What do you feed him, rolled oats? Yep. Yeah, sure is. You know, I haven't been on a horse for three months. I used to live on one, practically. Uh, I sure would like to ride him. <laughs> I'm sorry, son, but if the sergeant ever caught me letting anybody ride my horse, I'd be found in a beaten flatbush. Yeah, sure, I understand. Well, it's mighty fine seeing him anyway. He sure is pretty. south of the battery. Oh, that's too bad. You ought to travel, you know. It's really quite broadening. Yes, well, I'm broad enough now. <laughs> Sergeant, um, do you like children? Well, I bet I had. I've got six of my own. Oh, you don't say. You know, I've got 20. You're... What? <laughs> that isn't the clinic. I work there. Oh. Well, good night, Sergeant. It's nice to meet you. Phew, was that close? <sighs> Hello, Texas. How'd you like the ride? Oh, I liked it. Fine. And as for you, Johnson. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you, Sergeant. <laughs> Merry Christmas. 
Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> what else do you do besides feeding sugar to a horse? Oh, I'm sort of a kindergarten teacher. I keep the children busy and amused while they're convalescing. You know, it helps them get well quicker. Do I have to get sick to join your class? <laughs> I'm afraid you're much too young for that. I hate to let you go. I'll see you tomorrow at three. Good night. Good night. Oh, Jimmy! Your coat! Oh! <laughs> Thanks very much for letting me wear it. You're sure welcome. Oh, oh, here. Yeah. Up the bottles? Oh, oh, oh. The wire depends the best. Yeah. <laughs> we have to pick up the bottles. <laughs> Jeannie, come on, Jean, you're back. <laughs> Here, hold my coat. I'll show you what a bowler I am. Never mind bragging. Right, old fella. Shoot the works. <laughs> Stand clear. Oh, what a champion.
Ah, you know, we're going to have a lot of good times together. Goodbye. Bye, Jenny. Goodbye, dear. You're just like the daughter I always wish for. Come on, let's get going. Get here, lad. Happy landing, sir. Goodbye, Madam Gunny. Just for Daniel, Countess. See you, Carlos. And don't be gone too long. No, hurry back. You. We'll be back, and you take good care of yourself and don't go into those bowling alleys. Mr. O'Brien, can't you gentlemen please take the train? Oh, 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 there she goes. I suppose you'd like to have us take a stagecoach. Oh, oh, oh. Now, don't worry. We'll be back before you know it. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Don't you worry. They'll be all right. But it's the only one you've missed so far. Everything else we like alike. <laughs> you know, I had a hunter with something to keep me here in New York. Enjoy it. Do you have somebody back in Texas? Oh, sure. Do you like her? Oh, crazy about her. Oh. Uh, tell me more about her. What's she like? Well, she's uh, pretty. But uh, about your coloring. Brown eyes. I suppose she's crazy about you, too. Oh, yeah. Every night when I come home, she, she runs clear to the gate to meet me. What's she going to say about me? Well, I don't know. She'll probably say, um... <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, horses. <laughs> yeah. How many fellas you got on the street? Oh, not many. Who? Just Mr. Chadwick, Mr. Belton, Mr. O'Brien, and you. As soon as I get a decent job, we can get married. Jimmy, you just proposed to me. What? I did. Well, it's, it's all right, isn't it? Darling. Paper, mister? Not just now, sonny. Extra, extra. Paper, paper. I'm still pretty worried about those Brussels sprouts. Oh, Jimmy. Could you set up a spinach? Okay. <laughs> Come on, I gotta tell somebody. Our friend should be back. Let's go. We had hope until an hour ago. I knew. I would never see them again. Somehow, I knew. Thank you. 
keep the tobacco jar filled, Joseph. And bring the hot toddies as you usually do. I know you are here. I cannot see you or touch you. But I know you've come home. back for a while. For a while. And then, what? You're not afraid, Chad. No. Only curious as to what comes next. We'll find that out when the time comes. Oh, are we still in partnership? It looks like we're out of business. Yes, and good riddance, too. <laughs> Oh, Jim, don't be ridiculous. You can't have three best men. <laughs> Who says I can't? Why can't I have three best... Joseph? Joseph, do you see why I can't have three best men if... What's the matter, Joseph? You have not heard? Tell us their good news. Strange seeing it from this side. There's no pain for us, except our grief. Everything seems faint and far away, except loving people. Madam Tanya. Madam Tanya.
left him a couple of miles. Enough to get married on. Shouldn't have done it. Money's bad for kids. <laughs> Don't forget, you still owe us a dinner from the last time you were wrong. <laughs> Dear Jimmy and Jean, accept this gift for the happy day. I can see in your eyes it's not far off. You have a blessing. Do this for a couple of strangers. You are not strangers. You feel the very lonely place in his heart. But won't you need these? No, Jimmy, thank you. I'm well provided for. Is there anything I can do? Perhaps, Jimmy, you would come and live here for a while. So Joseph and I would have someone to look after. Oh, I'd be glad to, ma'am. Go now. You have a lot to talk over. I beg your pardon, are you related to the men who lived here? They were our friends. Could you give me some idea what they were like? The report is that they were eccentric old hermits. That's not true. I should say not. They were swell. Well, I'm on the daily press. My paper wants human interest. Won't you come along and talk it over? This is station WRC National Network, New York City. You have just heard your radio reporter have given you the latest news flash from the WRC tower. The time is 15 minutes after 10. Want me? Here's a story for our next week's personalities on the news program. Now get those kids. Every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m., which brings to the air people who have appeared... Don't you? Jim, they might give you a chance to sing. And all you need is a chance. That's right, Jimmy. Opportunities don't come every day. What about Jean? It says in the telegram they want her, too. Oh, I couldn't. I'd be too scared. Go ahead and see what they say. Darling, if they let you sing, I know you'll be a hit. You'll be famous. We'll be rich. You'll be able to buy that big ranch with a million horses. Madam Tanya can come stay with us. Yeah, we can all live happily ever after. I still say he'd be better off back in Texas, on the ranch where he belongs. Well, I agree with Michael. The boy's got talent. Why shouldn't he do something with his voice? Sure, and why not? What's wrong with him being a singer? The world needs music just as much as it does buildings and bridges. All right, have it your way. And I'm not in favor of it. Uh, my name's James Houston. I received this telegram from Mr. Barrett. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Houston is here. Mr. Houston, you may go right in. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, I'm... Uh... <laughs> Aren't you going to pick it up? I sure hope I didn't do any damage, Miss Terry. Oh, that's all right. Where have I seen you before? Oh, probably in the paper. Mm hmm. Well, Texas, <laughs> are you going to sing on the air? Oh, I hope so. Well, let me know when you go on. I'd like to hear you. My telephone number's on there. Good luck. Why, thank you, ma'am. Where can I phone? Right here. 
right here. I'll use this one. Thank you. Oh, Jimmy, really? Yeah, they're going to put me on the broadcast tonight. Yeah, I'm going to sing. Oh, darling, I know you'll be good. Would you call Madam Tanya and tell her? I've got to go practice. I mean, rehearse. Yeah, I'll come by and pick you up after it's over, and we'll go celebrate. Bye, honey. I'll, I'll be singing to you. Goodbye, and good luck, darling. Twitchell. He's going to sing. Sing? <laughs> no, not him. I mean, Jimmy. He's singing tonight at 7.30. WRC. I've got to tell all the nurses. Is my wife here? I know she's over nine years old. This is a children's hospital. Hello, Mom. Mama. Yeah. Mom, what I called you about is, is, is a surprise. Yeah, I want you to tune in on WRC at 7.30, New York time tonight. Yeah, I... What? Oh, no, Mama, I don't need them. No, but, Mom, it's not cold enough for them. But, Mom, people don't wear them in New York. Yeah. Now, don't forget, Mom, 7.30 tonight. Yeah. Goodbye, Mom. Thank you. Uh, do you mind? No, it's quite all right. Thank you. Miss Terry's apartment. Who's calling? No, she isn't in right now. I don't know when she'll be back. I'll tell you you call, Mr. Houston. Hello. Uh, hello, Miss Terry. This is Jimmy Houston. Yeah, I, I met you at the radio station, you remember? Yeah, well, I'm calling you like you said, because I'm going to be on the air tonight at 7.30. You are? Yeah, singing. Oh, you must be swell, because Barrett's tough. Sure, I'll be listening in. Thanks for letting me know. Goodbye, Mr. Houston. Sounds pretty good. Pretty good. It's a hit. We can go into a fast rehearsal just as soon as Tony Marshall returns from Florida. Oh, poor old Tony. He'll be making his entrances in a wheelchair pretty soon. Don't worry, he's had his face lifted. Besides, he still brings them in. What about some dinner? Oh, it's quarter to eight. Quarter to eight? Wait a minute, there's something I want to hear if I haven't missed it. So why should we run? Let's get drenched in moon. The blossoms of romance need showers to start. Don't shelter your heart, it's raining dreams. I heard the thunder crash the moment we kissed. And now that we've kissed, it's raining dreams. I saw the lightning flash and light up the skies. Or was it your eyes? It's raining dreams. We're caught in a moon shower with no place to run. So why should we run? Let's get drenched in moon. The blossoms of romance need showers to start. Don't shelter your heart. It's raining worse than heading off a stampede. Uh, how was I? All right. Here they come. Hello? 
Oh, yes, Miss Terry. Yes. He's here. You're doing fine. Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. Well, it's nice of you to say so. Oh, I mean it. Really. Oh, just a minute. My producer, Phil Hubert, wants to talk to you. Hello, Mr. Houston. Yes, this is Phil Hubert. <laughs> well, you're very good. Thank you very much. Well, I'd be glad to, sir. Yes, I have the address. I'll be up there directly. Goodbye. Well, we can't go very far wrong with a voice like that. Let's see, we could build him up on the radio, and then I'd get Kelly busy on the publicity. And if he looks like you say he does, I think maybe we've got something. I think we've got something. Jimmy! <laughs> Darling, you are marvelous. Oh, thanks, honey. But you don't know the half of it. I'm on my way now to see a fellow about my singing. <gasps> yeah, I just came by to tell you I can't stay. I've got to go right away. Goodbye. Uh, I'll phone you later. Goodbye. I'll be waiting. Well, hello. Oh, evening, ma'am. This is Mr. Hubert, Mr. Houston. Proud to meet you, sir. Hello. Congratulations. You stopped the show. Oh, no, ma'am. I reckon it was fixing to stop anyway. I came on at the end. Oh. <laughs> well, how did you like the applause? Oh, fine, sir. I, I figured half of it was good manners and the rest was on the station payroll. <laughs> it's a crime to spoil modesty like that. Boy, you are a natural. <laughs> Miss Terry and I are going over the book of our new show. Our old leading man is beginning to creak a little. We thought perhaps you might fit in with our plans. Well, I declare you... You mean on the stage, sir? Yes. Oh, no, I don't think that oh, I... Oh, come on, have a drink. Have something to eat. Let's get better acquainted. I feel lucky tonight. To success. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Dr. Brown is on day duty. Success. I'm gonna sing in a show. Lovely music. La 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 Yes, sir. You better go to bed. It's after three. I'm all right, Joseph. I'm all right. Good night, Joseph. Good night. La 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 la. Oh, well, why not? Who wouldn't celebrate? He's getting his chance. Yeah. Chance to get mixed up with a lot of cheap people who turn his head and make a fool of him. He'll drink too much and he'll laugh too much. He'll lose his way. Well, two sides to it, George. The way I see it, he'll give people a lot of pleasure. Ah, he's a good lad. And he's in love with the fine girl. She'll keep him steady. To be born innocent is natural. But to die pure of heart, that's a gift. Well, stick to your faith, Michael. You may need it before you're through. Ah, you're always looking at the black side of things.
you're sorry for it. No power of darkness can touch you if you'll only say you're sorry, John. But I did need a doing. I have no remorse. I never did have. And I'd be a hypocrite to say I'm sorry now. And then a bad marriage. It's a tough struggle. Success and applause isn't everything, Jimmy. Sit down, Jimmy. Sometimes I get homesick, too, for someone of my own. Someone who really loves me. The way a woman wants to be loved. Oh, she's the smooth one. Smooth as silk, that one is. Every move. Every word is figured. I want someone who really loves me the way a woman wants to be loved. Oh. And him taking it hook, line, and sinker. Oh, I've made an awful mess of it. You've got to help me, Chad. You've got to help me bring the boy back. Chad. I heard something. Sure you heard something. I've been talking to you right along. It's the old bugle call. The last burst. It's for me, my... David. This is my boy, Michael. My boy, David. I thought I'd never see you again. We all think that. I've come for you, Dad. Where now? What's it like? What do you want it to be like? I remember the old army post at Simla. Without the reins, of course. <laughs> We're happy there. Great country. Splendid regiment. Good horses. Good sport. Keen men. 
Then that's it. Every man gets his dream. Let's go. Mother's waiting. Mother. Good luck, Michael. Goodbye, Alan. No, no. Not goodbye, old fellow. We'll be seeing you. Won't we, David? That's right, Dad. Good luck, Michael. Good luck. Sometimes I, I get homesick for the prairie, the stars and the quiet, the sound of a dog barking way off in the distance. Say, do you like horses? My father used to practically live at the tracks. I went with him a lot. Before I was ten, I knew every racehorse in the country by his first name. No fooling. Say, you know, you're a pretty wonderful girl. Am I? I'm just a hick. I, I don't know why you've been so nice to me. I think a lot of you. You know that, don't you? Don't answer. Arlene. My ex-husband, drunk as usual. Arlene. Let me in. No, you'd better go out the back way. I can't sneak out. And leave. We don't want a row. Unpleasant things have a way of getting into the papers. Think of the show. But I can't leave Please. you here with me. I'm handling him better alone. Please. You, you're sure you'll be all right? Oh, Jimmy. Let's go away for a few days to the country. I need a rest, and you do too, before we start rehearsal. Well, what about Mr. Hubert? Oh, I'll talk to him and make all the arrangements. You go home and pack a bag, and I'll telephone you when I'm ready to leave. Open the door! I thought so. You're Houston, aren't you? That's right. Uh, you don't look like you've been sneaking out of back doors very long. She doesn't want to see you. Get going. Okay. You'll find out. I was worried about you. 
I just wanted to make sure you were all right. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I've been awful busy. I, I wanted to talk to you, but uh, seems like I haven't had a minute. You're looking well, too. I'm sorry about not seeing you, Jeannie. I understand. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so glad about your success. It's just what I wanted for you. Thanks. Everything happened so suddenly, Jeannie. I... Maybe later on, when things quiet down, I sort of get my breath again. I... I guess I better go now. Goodbye, Jim. Good luck. Jimmy. If things ever go wrong for you or people don't treat you right or you'll get sick or something, don't forget my friend. You'll let me know if you need me, won't you? You fool, go after her. Don't let her get away, Jimmy. Hubert, everything's all set. We can stay until Tuesday. Isn't that wonderful? It gives us three days. I'll pick you up in about 20 minutes. Will you be ready? You bet I will. Goodbye. Pinewood Inn, but I mean important. If you don't stop annoying me, I'll have you put away where you belong. Arlene, I've been trying to see you to tell you I got a chance of a comeback. Miller's got a show. He's he's going to give me the lead if I can get on my feet again. And, well, I, I can't do it alone. Miller's going to give you a lead? Yes. What are you trying to do? Kid me? Look at you. I knew you wouldn't care. I know there's someone else now. There's always been someone else. But no one loves you the way I do. Arlene. Arlene, I... Take your hands off me. But Arlene, please. Madam Tanya, I'm worried about Jimmy. It's not right for him to go away with that Terry woman. No good will come of it. Nothing but trouble. Do everything you can to stop him. Jimmy, please don't go. What's the matter? You look worried. I am. That girl. Those stories in the paper. Oh, that's nothing but publicity. It don't mean anything. Jimmy, a man can't spoil his life over a woman. I know our friends wouldn't like you to go away with that girl. Well, she's fine. She, she gave me a part in her show, and, and we both want to get away to the country for a few days before rehearsals begin. Jimmy, Mr. Melton lost everything. 
home, family, reputation over such a woman. Oh, now you're making it sound much more serious than it really is. Now, don't you worry. I'll be all right. I'll be back by Tuesday. Goodbye. What was that? Just the luggage. What's the matter? You seem nervous. I do? Say, do you believe in hunches? Mm, sometimes. Why? I got a funny feeling we're going in the wrong direction. On the trail, when I feel like that, I usually turn back. <laughs> oh, I can see you were cut out for the stage, Jimmy. Superstitions and everything. Do they have superstitions on the stage, too? Heavens, yes. Hundreds of them. Madam Tanya's the one that has hunches, and she's not usually wrong. Is she the disagreeable old lady who answers the door? Well, she's not disagreeable. She's just been through a lot. You know, I don't think I should have run off and left her the way I did. Oh, nonsense, Jimmy. You shouldn't be living in that musty old house with a couple of musty old servants. You should have an apartment of your own where you can do as you please. I'll find you one. Well, that wind too much for you? Snuggle down. Oh, you're so nice, Jimmy. Maybe you won't think that after you know me better. Why not? Oh, I've got a lot of old-fashioned backwoods ideas. <laughs> oh, we'll soon get rid of those. We'll have a lovely time in Pinewood. We'll walk and ride horseback and roast chestnuts by the fire. No crowds, no autograph hounds. There aren't many people up here this time of year. I'll have you all to myself. <laughs> Part of Pinewood in? About five miles. Where can I get a drink? Right around the corner. Fill it up. I'll be right back. Yes. Get him out. It means you will linger in the shadows of Earth for all time. I can't go now. I can't. So be it, Michael. It gives me great pleasure to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that we have with us this evening two very distinguished Broadway personalities, Miss Arlene Terry and Mr. James Houston. Get up and take a bow. Go on, it'll be good for the show. If 
if we try hard enough, we may get Mr. Houston to give us a song. I tried to warn you. sudden. And that woman, she, she's gone. She had no soul at all to go on with. Jeannie, I'm sorry. If I could only tell her. We make mistakes sometimes that can never be remedied. It's myself I'm blaming, Jimmy. Not you. asking too much. Could you be doing me a favor before we go? Could you give the boy another chance? He's a good lad. And he's learned his lesson. Give him a chance to live. So be it. Let him go back. Come along, O'Brien. You're the stubbornest soul we ever loved. I followed it. 
he brought me here. Sometimes we have to go to the darkness alone before we can see the light. There's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repented. <laughs>